성공 핵심이자 에터미에서 가장 중요한 가치를 배우는 The time we learned the most important value of enemy. The time for the balanced life and life scenario lecture delivered by Chairman Park. 명강이 한번 만나볼까요? 영상 함께 보시죠. And video on. Today, we saw a number of people who achieved success, found out a little more about our products and about our competitive prices. I'm certain that you now understand that Atomy is a company that follows our principles. So if you think that we sell great product at low prices and a company that will do well for following our principles, then it is down to what you are going to do. While Enemy does offer opportunities for success, we can say that it is for everyone. Achieving success is a matter of how we will use this opportunity. Although we all dream of achieving success, most of us are unable to become successful. If you look at the statistics, only 1% of people became successful. In essence, they become rich and wealthy, and 4% of people become financially independent. These people aren't rich, but they don't need to rely on others. The next 10% of people are still working, but they are merely living from paycheck to paycheck. Another 15% of people had passed away. The data for the statistics were people from uh, in their 60s since we generated work between the age of 30s to 60s. The statistics shows that what happened after the 30 years of working. Now our life expectancy is currently around 90 years, 90 years old. But there is a bleak rumor going around saying that if we unlucky, we might live up to 120. This will be a big disaster because the remaining 70% of people leave out the rest of their lives and uh, without any money and in poverty. Even though so many people dream of success, study diligently in their own way, and work so hard to the point of exhaust, exhaustion, why is it hard for the majority of people to achieve success? Actually, there was a person who thought about this question very deeply. He was the steel king, Andrew Carnegie. Although he was born very poor, he later became very wealthy, and he used his wealth to set up a Carnegie Foundation, which still sent warmth to the those in need, even to this day. When Carnegie became old, he started wondering if I were to be born poor again, would I still be able to become wealthy? For Carnegie, he believed that if he were born into a poor family 10 times or even 100 times, he would be able to succeed every single time. Thus, he started to think about why all other people weren't able to become successful. He he wondered why these people couldn't succeed. He found out that people would fail because they didn't know the law of success. Now, this is called a law, not because someone says it is. This law is similar to law of nature because it is already uh, predetermined. As long as we follow these laws, you will succeed. If you, do, if you don't, you won't be successful. The law of nature are similar to the law of farming because the law of farming is also predetermined. For instance, if you are a farmer in Korea, rice seeds need to be planted in the spring and then harvested in the fall. If you plant a seed in the fall, you won't reap anything since you're going against the laws of nature.
Since the laws of nature is already fixed, you need to follow it in order to succeed. For something that is already predetermined like this, some use the concept of true north principle. It means that north is already predetermined. You might have lost your sense of direction in this curvy road of Songnisan. Raise your point finger like this, please. Would you point to where north is? Where is it? I see most of you pointing in this direction. I can't see some of you are insisting that this direction, if you are really certain, let's assume that this is the north. Can you say that this is the north? Just your, uh, do you have like route voice? It might be the north, but it might not be. We need a campus to show where north is because it will follow the law. Thus, we are using these fixed laws to, to help us understand that we must be following if you want to succeed. Essentially, there is something called the law of success, which is fixed, just like the law of farming. And if you follow it, you are guaranteed to achieve success. If you don't follow this law, you are bound to fail. If you follow the law of farming, you will reap a great harvest. When, you, yet when it comes to the farm of life, most of people fail and only a few succeed. Additionally, if you ask other questions like this, where do you see yourself in 10 or 20 years? And what kind of person will you have become? Most of people can't give you a definite answer. When you talk about success, they don't have anything, anything to say. Now, if you are completely, completely satisfied your uh, current life, if nothing else to hope for, and you believe that you're living the dream, then you must have already pictured the life you have now three or five years ago. If you are currently unhappy with your life, that means that three or five years ago you didn't have a clear picture of life you want to leave. Thus, even after three or five years went by, you are still living the same unhappy life you had then. And therefore, unless you clear now what kind of life you really want to live now, you will be continually living your unhappy life three years, five years, or even ten years later. If you are truly unhappy with your current situations, you must plant the image of your desired life in your head. In the real world and in business, it is a management process that is abbreviated as MBO. MBO actually stands for Management by Objectives. Essentially, you manage everything according to the objectives, so you first need to have your objectives in your mind and then manage accordingly to your goal. And you look at the successful, all successful people, they have already uh, envisioned what they want. Likewise, if you want to live a successful life, you need to have an image of your successful self in your mind. Yes, when you try to describe this image, it may be unclear if that's the case, then your life to three to five years later will be unclear. You must have the image of your successful self in your head. Now, when you think about how you should succeed and it becomes really complicated, when you think of success, you will probably need money, right? And how much money is enough? Most people will answer a lot of money. So you ask, how much is a lot of money? They continue by saying, you know, a lot. Let's say a person went to a uh, reorder and she asked, uh, what made you here? And I want to buy a house. What kind of house? A good one. There's no difference. You think the person will buy a house? Of course not. If you are a serious buyer, you will know the type of residence, the number of bedrooms, the size, and the current prices. You would have all details already in your mind. People who envision the house are the one who buy it, while those who only want a good house want. The realtors ignore these people. How can you say you want to make money? Uh, the more, the better. And how much? It's like telling, like, uh, in the realtor and say, the bigger, the better. For us as humans, it is a complicated manner because we were made to be complex.
What makes us human beings? First, we have flesh, our physical body. Not only that, we also have a spirit, a soul. Usually, spirit and soul are um, synonyms, but in actually, they are different entities. Finally, we are surrounded by the environment. The reason why it's complicated to picture the details of your success is due to the fact that we were made to exist in this complexity. I'd like to clarify something with you. The people who don't like complicated things are the same people who live a life of poverty. When things get complicated, they complain, complain about it. You know this kind of people, right? Well, they will never be able to escape from the poverty. All the easy and simple ways to make money have all been taken away by other people. If you really want to be uh, become rich and successful, you must enjoy complicated things. By now, those people are thinking, why is he talking about spirits and souls? Just tell us how to make money because we our head hurts. And if this is what you think, you must change the way you think. Otherwise, you will continue to live in poverty. We all have to a physical body called flesh. And you could think of our flesh as a house for your spirit and soul. Uh, and you might be wondering, what's the differences between the spirit and soul? Simply put, um, only human being possesses a spirit. Animals don't have a spirit and only have a soul. Uh, here's an example to explain the spirit. Our spirit processes the concept of time. The Bible even say, uh, he also said uh, the eternity in the spirit, instead of dying 70, 80 years later, don't you want to live forever? The spirit is also related to our consciousness. Animals don't have... Um, Science. Let's say a dog, uh, after they the dog thing, maybe I shouldn't have a, a beaten the leg. Have you ever seen a dog who feel guilty? On the other hand, no matter how evil a person might be, even if people don't physically show it, uh, will feel remorse and about the wrongdoings that have been committed. Our flesh desires good health and longevity. These are the desires of the flesh. Additionally, it wants to live an abundant life. As you can see, each component has different desires. The spirit desires eternity, a good consciousness, and wants to give as well as receive love from the Creator, which are all spiritually related to soul, a spirit. The soul wants to know a desire to live a peaceful life. The pursuit of happiness and joy are the domain of the soul. Now the environment will live it could be separated into nature and social environment. Thus, we have a desire to contribute to this environment. We could summarize good health, longevity, and abundant life as live well. Our desire of living forever, having a good con um, conscience. Our loving, uh, loving creator, which we might not realize, is summed up as a love and desire to learn about the, the world, to live a peaceful life, could be paraphrased as soul. So four of these are fulfilled in the balanced manner. Can you say that you are living a successful life? Life when you are able to live well, love, learn, and contribute in life, we call this a balanced life. Again, this is known as a balanced life. Everyone, look it up for me a balanced life. Your goal in life needs to be a balanced life. This kind of person you should strive to be uh, is a person who is living in a living a balanced life, and this should be uh, the goal you envision in your mind. It is very important for you to do this because your body is programmed to follow your thoughts. 
Your thoughts will change your body. If you were to receive $30,000 in your bank account every month, I can guarantee that all your health will become better and you will feel much lighter. Although receiving the money in real life is effective, your body will still change just by envisioning yourself receiving uh, $30,000 a month. And that will change your body. So you need to picture yourself becoming rich. Rich people are able to pay the medical bills uh, of their sick siblings. If they have a sick friend, they can say, hey, don't worry about the bill. I won't, it won't cost much with insurance. Here's uh, $10 k to help. Don't worry about the fees. You, that's when, that's a real rich people. You have to believe that you can live the life. What happens if you picture yourself living that life? Will your body change or not? Of course, it will change. Thus, you must set a goal that is good enough to change your body. Do you know why you are tired, out of energy? It's because you are trying to make about 2K or 3K dollars. Because you think that nothing can change with that uh, salary. It's no wonder you feel so powerless and trapped. If you calculate all the possible expenses, you need to earn uh, 30K or 50K dollars a month in order to live the life you want. You might think that sounds nice, but I can't even earn 2K or 3K dollars. So how can I make 30K or 50K dollars a month? After observing people who can't earn money, I realized why they are like that. They don't know about money. They have a lot of misunderstandings about money. One example is this. The more money you make, the harder the life is. That's what they believe. But that's not true. You can ask a rich people. You can ask three different people with different salary. Those are three earning 3K dollars a month might say making money is very hard and if you ask 300k dollars honor, they say nothing is easier than making money and the world is full of money. Life is only hard when you make little money. Another misconception people to live is you need to budget your expenses based on your income. There are people who constantly keep a, a ledger, right? Well, I've never seen anyone writing a ledger becoming wealthy. The rich never keep a ledger. They never do it. I don't keep one either. I stop my life from doing it even when we were poor. Instead of keeping a ledger, I told my I told my wife, "Don't save money when you don't have much. You shouldn't save when you don't uh, have enough money. You need to just spend the money you have because you won't be able to spend much anyway." The only time you can actually save money is when you are making lots of it. There was a time when I was poor as well. One day when I came home, it was really cold for some reason. So I said to my wife, it's freezing, why don't you turn up the heat? You shouldn't try to save when you don't have money. After hearing that, she said, it's due to that kind of mind that we are in this mess. Even though that wasn't the case, she won't turn on the heater. Let's say it is cold. If you only spend about $100, but if you add only $50, then your house will become warmer. But you are trying to save this little money. And we have about five months for winter, and every year you can save about $250 uh, for three years. I uh, spent a very cold three years to save only $750. If you only save money, you cannot become rich. But many people really believe that we need to save money, and I was almost divorced. Don't do that. At school, we learn that. But you shouldn't budget your expense based on your income. You should first decide, determine your expenditure before your income. 
If you want to buy a house in three to five years, then how much money would you need to save? You might want to save 5K to 10K a month, right? If you want to provide a good education for your kids and study what you want, you need at least 3K dollars. If you think that giving your parents 300 or 500 dollars is enough to fulfill your uh, duty, that's not true. You need to give them 2K to 3K dollars. Write down all your expenses first instead of uh, determining your income. So expenditure should come first. For traveling, you might want to save 2K dollars every month so that you, your family can go on two trips a year with 24K dollars. Next, you might want to help the less fortunate uh, people with about uh, 1K dollars. Then you will have the total expenditure and that will determine your income. And you can try to find what job, what kind of jobs can make me make that much money. That's your decision. Depending on what you are envisioning in your head, everything can be changed. So you need to have the life that you want to live continually play in your mind like a movie. To help with this, all of you will be writing your life scenario. You need to create a movie for the life you want to live, and the writer of the scenario is you yourself. And who is the main character of the movie? You yourself. Who is the director? You. So the movie, the result of the movie, the story of the movie will be determined by yourself. So this is life scenario form. You have 10 dots here, and you have a lot of circles here. And you should uh, put those uh, in the circle, and everything should be considered, it should be covered. Why? Because only when the four are balanced, you can have a true passion. When you feel like you don't really have any uh, energy or passion, that's because you don't have enough love in your mind. One day my mom called me, she said, I want to die. I asked why I am old and I am I am making you tired she said actually I um, have given her some money but uh, even when I had some difficult times I still sent her some money because I thought that if I don't do that because of financial difficulties, she would be very worried about me thinking that he might have a lot of difficulties, financial difficulties. So that is why I uh, tried and sent some money for sent, sent money to her. Even uh, with financial difficulties, uh, but one of my siblings told her, actually, he is having financial difficulties, and she that's why she called me, saying that I should die earlier. So I told her, mother, I'm going to get back on my feet. Now, when I do, I will be the one who would be, you, you will be the one who would be the happiest. And she said, of course, I would dance with joy when you succeed. I said, mother, you have to stay alive and see it happen. I need to know that you will be alive so that I can have the strength to get back up. If you aren't there, then I, where can I get the energy? energy and courage. So you must stay alive until I can make it happen. So she said, I understand you're so good with words. 
Anyway, our parents want to see us doing well before they actually pass away. You have to do whatever you can to fulfill the dying wishes of your parents. Imagine how worried your parents would be if they had to leave this world. when you are living in hardship. We must live well for the sake of our parents. I always knew in my heart that due to the people I love, I needed to get back up. When things are hard, I fully understand how scary and difficult it is to have hope. Even though I am up here calling you this, you might be thinking, it's easy for you to say that because you succeeded. What if I feel that is why you are afraid of having a sense of hope? I had a business that went underwater. I still uh, had private loans and was in that I had lost my house and car. Sometimes when a company goes bankrupt, the owner can get stricken. In my case, I, it was my liver. My doctor friends told me that it wouldn't live alone without special treatment. I didn't have a house, the children were still in school, and I couldn't even work. I was just stuck in a tough spot. If I had been healthy, I could have earned some money by working by myself. I didn't have money, and I was sick. It was a total despair. I had never dreamed that this kind of situation can happen. However, there was something that I would tell myself repeatedly, which was the best wish to have when you don't have one is to have hope. The moment you are unable to hope is the best time to have hope. Essentially, when you are broke and ill, everything will seem hopeless. There's nothing you can do about it, right? However, even if it, is, it was hard, I had to slowly pick myself up. After that, I started working forward. Now when you are trapped inside a cave, you could be surrounded by cliffs. Yet, if you see a small, very, very small light, far there, you have to walk toward that light, that hope. If you are surrounded by despair, You might want to give up. I know it is very hard, but when you move toward that small light step by step, that will make changes and that will make the light larger. And one day you would see your life full of light. And that's what I envisioned in my mind when I was still in dark. If you are de uh, depressed, if you are powerless, I want you to get back up to make at least one step toward the light. And that way the light will become larger. Your hope will become larger. So because we have our loved ones, we need to live well. Because I had my loved mom, I had to live well to overcome the difficulties. And I had to get back up because of my loved sons and daughters and my wife as well. When you feel like you don't have passion or power in your mind, then that's because you lost your love. So you should get back your love and your passion as well. We need to get back up because of our loved ones. So this is your uh, balanced life. To live well, basic things for your life should be resolved. Uh, first, your house. and your uh, car as well. To live well, you should be healthy. To love, 
education for your kids and traveling. You should be a good son or daughter for your parents and you can also contribute to uh, some uh, volunteer work. Cash. Or repayment for that. So for the house part, you should write down what kind of house you want to buy and live in. Before doing that, you should give a score for your current stage. So this, uh, you need to write down your dream house. How big it would be, or how much it would be. Then uh, write down your current stage and mark where you are. You can say I have only 30 points for a house, and you should put exact numbers. Exact numbers for how much uh, will be needed for that future health, education for your kids, traveling. You might mark here uh, your love for parents, volunteer work, and cash, and you can connect the dots. You can connect the dots, and that is your life wheel. If the wheel is not very round, if it is very small, that means your life is not balanced. If you want to make it to the 100 points, you might say I need to make all of these 100 points and you can write down the details of your future. Envision this future in your mind. You should picture a very detailed future, what kind of house you want to buy, what kind of car you want to drive. That way, your mind will change and your body will also change. Your attitude will also change. Your confidence will change. The life scenario uh, is right here. So this is life scenario. For example, two years later, I want to... Travel in Guam, and you can mark your current stage and connect the dots. You should imagine your future. For example, making 30K or 50K dollars a month, you should imagine that future. No one believes that that future is 100% realistic. No one thinks that. Actually, the possibility to achieve that future might be only about 1%. You might believe that 90% of the future is not realistic, but what you should do, you should believe in that 1%. If you don't do that, then you, your life will not change. If you really want to make a change to your life, then you should be very determined to believing in the 1% small percentage of possibility. That way, that number would grow to 5%, 10%, and 50%, and 100%. It's up to you to where to focus on. One of our company motto is follow the faith. 
The faith is not just about believing in what you see. The Bible even says that seeing is not believing. What if I said to you, I want you to believe that this is a microphone. You l l probably think, has he lost his mind? You don't believe in what you see. You have to believe in this unseen. Because faith is the act of believing in the unseen. Although you can't see it yet, you can't show others. You need to create your, the life you want in your mind. Place it firmly above you. And then you need to stand above it. And then follow the faith means to stand above your life scenario. Now you are here. When you are here, you are standing above it. However, the problem is when you leave. Because most people snap back to the reality and you have to continue to be. Until when? Until your dream became a reality. So you can't awake. Uh, you need to live in the movie that you created. If you continue to do so, your dream will eventually become your reality. I know this is great, but I will end the lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening.